If bees don't pollinate the fruits in the forest that we have, very soon you'll get hungry animals disturbing us. That's why they are not pests at all. In fact, they are essential partners of life alongside humans. Singapore is a surprisingly unexpected place if you know where to look. I am Clarence, I'm 38 years old. I do many, many things. One of them is I run the rooftop farm. It's called the Sundowner. So the range of experiences we run opens up the chance for people to explore these lesser known areas. I just want to point you off to the empty combs that you see in front of you first. The rooftop farm experience is three parts organic gardening, bee encounter and farm to table tastings. There's not a red bee landed and then they... Most people's encounter with bees are getting stung. We want to show them that when they come up close with bees, they're actually very docile and they won't harm you if you don't threaten them. Bees are not pests. If this species were to go away, extinct, everything that we know will change. In fact, humanity will itself struggle to survive. Bees play a key role in the health and connectivity of forests. Uh, around 70% of native flora in Southeast Asia's lowland forests and most of our food crops depend on bee pollination. There are about 120 different bee species found in Singapore, with the Asian honeybee, a generous pollinator, being the most common. They are often spotted in urban parks and even rooftop gardens and can be reared in a box to produce honey and beeswax. Over here, we have three different species today, okay? There's a red dwarf, black dwarf, and Asian honeybees. It, what a bee does is when it finds a source of pollen, it will come to the top of the comb and start to dance around. This is called a waggle dance. That's how they talk. And they can see for themselves the active pollination process and the whole cycle of life from root to growth of leaves to flowering and then pollination and then fruiting. So when bees harvest nectar and make honey, Plants that grow in nutrient-rich soil will produce nectar that is more nutrients and the honey will also have a higher nutrient content. So really everything is circular. Everything in nature is connected. The soil biology under the soil level, that's where billions of microorganisms live, bacteria, algae, fungi, nematodes, earthworms, ants, beetle grub. That's the stuff we don't see because it's under the soil. So we show people what's under the soil. Can you tell what's harmful for the soil? Uh, so if we see beetle grub, beetle grubs are the only harmful ones here. They eat the roots. Uh, that's why we have chickens. The chickens also eat the excess beetle grubs. We teach people how to grow these herbs and plants. They are free to clip what they want and uh, they can uh, take it back home and start growing something. And the farm to table tasting just opens up people's senses because they harvest the garnish right in front of them. Because we grow organic, they don't even need to wash it. The people who come here sometimes are, are mind blown because they never expect to find a place like that. Usually you just passively sit down and eat it. But here they get the fun of going upstairs to forage for herbs themselves. They bring it down and create their own pizza. I've always worked in the outdoor environment alongside nature, being a park manager and gardens by the bay for seven years. So it's very much an interest to preserve and protect flora and fauna, biodiversity and our organic philosophy is attuned to that. We're creating our own adventures, not just for ourselves, but it's also to spread the, the joy of showing people unexpected stuff that they would never otherwise have discovered. There's lots of stuff to do if you look the right way. Literally in your own in your own back door or your own rooftop that was not used before. You just need some imagination, ideas, willingness to explore, push the boundaries even. 